Good morning, everyone. Let's take a few breaths together. It is good to be with you and to be here. And we have uh, Jerry here as well. I've been having some technical difficulty this morning and uh, some really weird stuff. Phone shutting itself off. The screen image looks very different than usual. So just uh, rolling along with life and just experiencing it rather than letting it um, stop us. So today's discussion is about the fear of freedom. What in the world is that, right? So the fear of freedom and the freedom that I'm referring to is the freedom from the present moment and um, and how when we can be in the present moment we can be free from the present from the future and the past and sometimes those future and past have such hold on us for example the um, if you're living in, you're, if you're here but you're anxious about what's coming in the future you know you're not really free you're kind of caught up and the same thing you can be caught up in the past as well and so what may cause the fear of the future and um, one of them is because we're afraid of unknowns not knowing can be disturbing you probably have experienced life situation where you know, it's pretty crappy right here, but you don't know what the future may hold. So you hang on to the comfort of um, that crappiness that is here. At least it, you're comfortable with it. And um, in any situation, we human beings seek safety. And that safety requires us to feel safe. You know, that, I mean, just deep down in the core, down at the brain development um, is that need to survive. So that is by far and foremost the most important um, operating system, so to speak, that is operating um, inside us. So when, when that threatens, then we're not sure how to act, right? And we go into freeze, flight, or fight. Um, so coming back to fear of um, the unknown, that that can keep us stuck, okay? Or it can make us fight, or it can make us flee. And so, you know, in my own life, um, I was such in such a crappy place. I was in a miserable marriage. Um, things was just horrible. We didn't have money to make house payments. We barely had food on the table. Um, um, someone was addicted to gambling, the money was going into gambling, I mean just life was really horrible. But yet I was afraid of leaving that situation because I felt safe that at least I knew what I would encounter each and every day. So that was my security blanket. And so we can hang on to that security blanket because it does provide us some level of comfort. Another reason is because um, it can bring up trauma. And, um, and of course, when you have trauma, you don't want to deal with that, right? And so sometimes when we, so we're afraid of finding freedom in the present moment is because that trauma might arise. And this trauma is operating in the background in our unconsciousness. 
So it's running in the background. And when that trauma happened in our life, we were not equipped with dealing with that trauma. That's why it's a trauma. And so our best way is to, one way is to just say, you know what, I'm shutting down. I'm going to, and then I'm going to deal with that later. And so when we do that, despite our mental or un or um, subconscious thought of, I'm, I'm going to shut down, I'm not going to deal with this right now, our bodies, our muscles, our organs still remember and we have um, the trauma, the impact of that trauma, the energetic is imprinted in our being. And so there's that aspect. Another reason why we're afraid of freedom is believing that we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, there's shame and there's guilt. Who am I? You know, who deserve to be happy, to receive the good things in life and the blessings in our life. So there's the fear of um, the unworthiness, okay? And then there's fear from because we're trying to please. And we're going to do the exercise on that today. And, you know, trying to please is such a condition, another condition, um, that when you examine it, it's amazing how much it is running your life, okay? And so understanding that um, we are human and that in order to be safe and alive, we, when we were young, we have to have someone take care of us. And so that trying to please also um, has been ingrained in our own life for a long time. So and then there's the fear of failing. Wow. Who's not afraid of making a mistake? I certainly am. And, uh, and so, or just making the wrong choice. I mean, a good example is um, buying clothing. You know, should I buy this one or should I buy that one? You know, and, and in many situations, there's pros and cons. And so remembering that there's pros and cons in every decision and every choice maybe will help, can help free um, me from, um, from being afraid to making a decision. So from, make, from making a mistake and realizing that, you know, they may not necessarily be a mistake, um, but that it's a choice and an experience. And that if it is turned out to be a mistake, you know, um, that's how we learn, right? It becomes a lesson that we can use to grow from. And, um, and so there's many ways you can look at that. Um, and so um, as a summary, in life we all fall down, you know, we stumble, sometimes we get back up really easy, and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we fall backward, sometimes we fall forward, okay? Um, but that, that's life. That's life. So... Um, now is the time for the contemplation and the guided meditation. So I'm going to invite you now to get comfortable and put things down and um, find a quiet place. it in. That's another way I enjoy being in the present moment. So as you keep your eyes closed, breathing in and becoming fully conscious of your breath.
So we're actually going to start with giving ourselves compassion. Imagine yourself to be naive and innocent. Maybe a brand newborn baby and just holding her or him in your arms. Holding with such tenderness, kindness, unconditional love and full support. And know that you have this awareness of this bigger and a more wiser you who's holding you, who's even vulnerable and extra tender in care and safety as we explore the concept of how when we try to please others It prevents us from fully embracing who we really are. And so, inviting you now to explore your memories of trying to please. It can be as recent as yesterday or last night or even this morning or as far ago as when you were young. shaped who you are. Understanding and courage and compassion can really help um, you to be okay with what happened and maybe even seeing why things happened the way it happened and um, maybe also understanding your life circumstances and how all of that influenced who you are and that uh, there may be opportunities for forgiveness and we'll do that next time. So now I'm going to ask you to find a new paradigm. 
So how can things be different now that you know what is operating in the background? So how can things be different? And maybe make a tiniest movement, tiniest step, so that it doesn't take you too far out of that comfort zone. And as the stretch, you know, of the elastic band, if it's gradual, then the rest of the band catches up. So rather than pulling that, making that huge leap, you know, then you're going to cause the elastic band to break. So just make a tiny movement. So how can things be different? How can you um, maybe please yourself? And if that's really difficult, if that is the other end of the elastic band, then maybe retreating back. So how can things be different? And notice how that makes you feel. If it's uncomfortable, just notice. So again, with compassion, understanding that you know you've been operating in X condition these people for 47 years in my instance so know that it's gonna be a discomfort okay from not knowing but if we were to step over into being a little bit different maybe please your, pleasing yourself a little bit more or notice something nice about yourself and allowing that to be or just merely seeing oh here I am trying to please somebody else again with kindness and with tenderness and with understanding and with compassion and with time that will get easier and easier to see to be in the new way of being. And so, thank you so much for being vulnerable. And know that we have all been there. And we all have our little pains and little discomforts that each of and every one of us carry. And that I hold that dearly in my heart for your pain and suffering. And I'm sure you feel the same for me. And I appreciate you sharing your time and your energy and your compassion with me and with all of you who have loved ones or with your loved ones as we start shining our own coin. We share our light with the world around us. So, maybe world peace is possible, starting with each and every one of us. One point of light. For now, I am in gratitude of this opportunity to be with you and to share this precious teaching from Jack Cornfield and my interpretation with you. Daphne's out. See you next week.